how does a person become homeless? I've, I've seen a lot of a lot of people that were successful and lose a significant other, and then they either walk away from it, turn to the bottle, or or even sometimes it's not just that; it's just a bad set of circumstances. It's a culmination of a person's whole life. How are you handling, you know, what you? Your wicked, evil stepmother did the. Uh... I've had other people that are homeless. Thumper, you you don't you don't drink, you don't do drugs. Why are you homeless? Why are you out here? I just you know I, 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 it just because it's just because I wasn't making enough. A lot of what people know or think they know about homelessness is based on number one, standing on the street, somebody standing on the street corner with a sign, which may or may not be an individual who's homeless, but they characterize them as the typical person who is homeless. Uh, but also uh, what you see on TV, and you know, over the years we've all all encountered uh, some character on a, a TV program or in the movies. Um, who um, is made to be reflective of who a homeless individual is. I can see! I can see! I have, I can, I have legs! And so typically if you'd say who is the average person that's homeless, most people will think about middle-aged white guy who's a substance abuser. I mean that's, that's the typical kind of uh, um, uh, description that we have in our own minds because that's what's been created for us. get a lot of people and you know they want to know well, we're afraid of the scammers. We don't know who the scammers are. We get judged a lot on whether or not we're actually homeless. I mean, you see a guy, you know, standing on a street corner holding a sign with a brand new pair of shorts, uh, a brand new pair of Jordans, and they drive by. That guy's not homeless. Sometimes we get lucky and people donate nice stuff. And there's a lot of us walking around that you would not guess was homeless. In the state of Michigan, we have a number of issues, and one of those is uh, access to state IDs. It's almost impossible to get an identification card here. That is the one thing California has over this place, is their, uh, their system for that. Because they scan your thumbprint, your ID's in the mail. Here it takes a list. God help you if you don't have anything on that list because they will not give it to you. We're also looking at the criminalization of homelessness. Uh, there are a number of communities around the state that have uh, actually enacted ordinances um, really to help um, address an issue of loitering, etc. And uh, it's uh, really in our eyes criminalizing homelessness and the intent is just simply trying to move people from one area to another so that they're not seen. It gets maddening because it's like as soon as you get, you get, you get comfortable you got a cop telling you you got to go or you're going to go to jail. And it's like, okay, you won't let me camp here. You won't let me camp over here. Put me in a, take me to a place that, I, that, it's, that you will not screw with me. Beyond that, we're looking at affordable housing and trying to establish policies that help to make affordable housing available throughout communities in the state. Once somebody asked me a question, they go, uh, um, would you rather blow your money than just pay rent somewhere? And I'm like, no, I can't pay rent anywhere, so I blow my money save money to get a place and that's not going to happen because like i said i don't make enough monthly so it doesn't matter what i come up with for a deposit i'm not going to make them rent anyway and there is enough abandoned homes in lansing to give each homeless person six houses do i think homelessness will ever be ended no i do not because if it ha if it could have been it would have been there are just not enough people that give a shit They'd rather tear down houses for parking lots. You meet, you meet a lot of different types of people being homeless. And you talk to different people, they got all kinds of bad, different backgrounds. My name is Chris Pruitt, I'm 58 years old. I've been homeless here for seven years. I worked and lived at a church for four years, but they say that's still being homeless because 
you know, you don't own it and you have to live there to have the job and stuff. And my signs I started doing because I wanted people to see a different side of homeless person, not just always begging and drunk and dirty and, and passed out and going to the hospital. It shows some that people do have talents. I send my signs to a fellow in Texas at Southern Methodist University, and he does exhibits with homeless signs and around the country. He's even gone out of country with them, England and I think Australia once or something. But um, he's messaged me a couple weeks ago that he's writing a book. He's doing a book, What is Home? And he asked me to write an essay for him about what is home. The first thing instantly that I thought of was loud voices, curse words, bruises, and sometimes blood. The place where you pack up your memories and put them in the basement and forget about them and where the thresholds of pain are tested. And the roof over your head is held ransom for good behavior. So you're just afraid all the time. And you talk about wanting to escape, you know, and try to get out of the house as much as I could and go to friends' houses and that's when the drinking started and drugs and stuff. Some people have a lot more things to escape from than others. And it all depends on your early development as a child, you know, what you're going to be able to handle in adult life. Now, trying to find jobs and trying to be, be a good person, you know, and just, I guess, everything society wants out of somebody, it just all doesn't matter to me now. You see, it's all those little things that you're supposed to do to live in society. I'm pretty much fed up with it. Like, what is this at a ball game and they got a deja vu plane running around with all these little kids? Oh, but yeah, I'm homeless and I'm not supposed to stand in front of a building for more than two seconds. Just societal things that I'm sick of. And why should I conform anymore? When all, when all society is doing is trashing itself. You know, sometimes I'll take three signs with me in, you know, the fireplace in East Lansing. I just have them posted and people, hundreds of people go by. You know, like you're not even there. I don't cry about people not giving me money or anything because I make a, I meet a lot of people doing this this way and they want to be friends on Facebook and I get them to bring stuff to give away to other people. And my needs are other homeless people's needs. So I just, I try to show people a different side of a homeless person and I try to help my counterparts. My name is Rebecca. I lived at Hannah's house for eight months total. I was pregnant for four of those months before Ava was born. I was married at a very young age and it was just a marriage that was abusive, um, controlling, and I finally got out of that marriage. But in that process, I became a drinker a very heavy drinker. And I got myself into another relationship after my divorce that was a drunken relationship. And then I got pregnant. I had nowhere to go. Um, I was four months and I wasn't eating the way I was supposed to. I was sleeping wherever I could. When I first moved in here, it was just more of a relief because I knew I had somewhere to sleep at night. But once I started um, really getting to know the, the director, the house managers, the other residents, we just had this bond and it made it more of a home. And then you didn't realize the things that you were learning and what they were trying to help you accomplish until Honestly, I'm still learning that. <laughs> I feel like I'm finally, after being gone here for over a year, I feel like I'm still, like I just actually got back on my feet. Um, but I do look back and this was, this is 
what helped me get to where I'm at right now. And I still talk to the house mom, one of the house managers, one of the, uh, well, the last director, we're still really close, you know, and they, um, they're still very supportive. My boys are amazing. My oldest just turned 21 yesterday. And I got an 18 year old and a 15 year old. Um, my two older boys are in school. They go to LCC, they're both working. And then my youngest, he's in high school, he plays football, he's doing great in school. Then I have Ava, my Hannah's house baby. She's a handful, <laughs> she's two. And then I have a nine month old daughter. So it was, it was just a big mess. But I, I mean, obviously stopped drinking. I'm just right now focused on still trying to get my life together for all my children. I made it sound really, really bad and horrible, but you meet a lot of good people being homeless, and, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of aspects about it that are great. My first real sense of family was out being homeless, being homeless. There's no sense in being negative. I've learned that being negative gets you nowhere. When you be positive, you have positive outcomes. And that's just the way I look at things. 